Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know if you've ever gone through stuff before, but I am so thankful that I can get heaven's perspective. And heaven's perspective is always right, amen. Open your Bibles, please, to the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation. We're taking communion tonight. I want to do a little bit of a different twist on this concept tonight. Revelation chapter 5, which is one of my favorite chapters. Beginning in verse 8, reading through the rest of the chapter. I want to talk to you tonight about the eschatological value of the blood of Jesus. Now Mark, or whoever it is up there, that's the value of the blood in future events. The value of the blood in future events, or the eschatological value of the blood of Jesus. Revelation chapter 5, beginning in verse 8. If you have it, can you say amen? Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb having a harp and the golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe and every tongue and every people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne of the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb. Can you say that tonight? Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength, glory and honor and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such that are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard them saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshiped him who lives forever and ever. Can you thank God for the word tonight? That we win, amen? Do you believe that tonight, that we win? That we are on the winning side. The value of the blood of Jesus in future events. Let's pray. Spirit of the living God, I need you. I cannot preach without you. I need your touch. I need you to move in my life. I need you to help me, oh God. Touch in this place tonight as we worship and celebrate you. And we give you glory and honor and praise. And we thank you. I need your anointing, oh God, that makes the difference, that breaks the yoke of bondage. We give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. And the house said, amen, amen. Communion, celebrating the Lord's Supper, has always been an opportunity for us to reflect and look back. The Lord's Supper, also known as Passover, for those in Jesus' day, was a reminder of how God delivered Israel out of the hands of Egypt. How if you will apply the blood, then the death angel will pass over you, and my goodness and my mercy and my grace will pass over you as well. How by the blood of the Passover lamb, God did what no man could do and delivered them out in one night. God's able, amen. For Jesus personally, communion was not only reflective but meditative over the actions that he would take to obtain our salvation. It was not the shedding of the blood of a lamb, but the shedding of his precious blood upon Calvary that would be the necessary key to unlock heaven's door. As he held the cup of wine, he proclaimed in symbolism, this is the cup of the New Testament, of the New Covenant. You are bought by my blood. For us, it is the opportunity to reflect back on how Jesus saved us. Amen? 
Before we take communion, we need to examine our lives to be sure that we have allowed Christ to wash us in his blood, that we are cleansed by his blood. Can you, do you do that tonight? That we are cleansed by his blood. However, it's not only reflective qualities in communion, but particularly as it relates to the blood, there are eschatological ramifications of his blood. With all the sin and the mess in the world today, can we safely say that his blood is still strong enough to the end? We sing that song, the blood will never lose its power. But will future events show this testimony to be true? Well, I'm not in the future, but I've read the book. Amen. I've read the book about the future, and I can testify his blood will never lose its power. Amen. I want to look at some things from this text and from the book of Revelation. Actually, i got seven points, but I won't be long, I promise you. Number one, his blood is the key to future events. His blood is the key to future events. I'm looking here in chapter 5. Most scholars will tell you that the scene of heaven opens in chapter 4. It opens with worshiping Jesus Christ. They are singing holy, holy, holy. And everything is going well as the creatures of heaven worship God. Until we come to chapter 5 where there is a scroll. Now there was a strong angel, but he couldn't open the scroll. John saw the scroll, but John couldn't open the scroll. May I note that the Antichrist is not here trying to open the scroll. The enemies of our God on this earth cannot open the scroll. And the angel cries out, who is worthy to open the scroll and loose the seals? John begins to cry because he thought no one could set future events in motion. No one was strong enough to open the scroll. But here comes the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, and he can. He is worthy to take the scroll. Why? Because our text says he was slain. He redeemed us by his blood. Can you thank God for the blood? of Jesus Christ tonight. His blood, the value of his blood sets future events in motion. It begins with God and bless God, it will end with God. You don't need to worry about foreign powers. You don't need to worry about who's going to be president. You don't need to worry about who's taking over the Middle East. You don't need to worry about who's going to be the Antichrist. There is only one worthy to open the scrolls and set judgment in motion for this universe, and it is because of his blood. Amen? Number two, number two, his blood has retained its ability to redeem. To redeem. Again, we note the power of redemption by the blood of the Lamb in Exodus. We testify today of the power of Jesus' blood to redeem, to buy us back. God is buying back his people from the clutches of Satan. Now, it seems throughout history there have been small remnants of revival. Prophets always spoke of a remnant of people that would be rescued. And while everybody seems to be engaged in sin, God would save a people out of all of that and call them his remnant. But in verse 9, God gathers one more time a remnant out of every tribe. Come on, somebody. Out of every tribe, every tongue, every people, every nation, God is gathering a remnant. He has the power to redeem. Amen. Are you redeemed tonight by the blood of the Lamb? Watch this, number three. The DNA of his blood testifies it's still his blood. The DNA of his blood testifies. I'm back in chapter 1, verse 5 now. You know, it's been said that we'll read the whole Bible normally until we get to the book of Revelation. And then we treat Revelation like it was handed out from outer space with foreign objects in it. Listen, John opens up this letter, 
And as he is greeting the churches, he in essence is testifying. You know that Jesus who lived on this earth, died for our sins, was raised on the third day, is seated at the right hand of power? Well, guess what? This is still that same Jesus Christ. He's a faithful witness. He's the firstborn of the dead. He's the ruler over the kings of the earth. He loved us and washed us in our sins in his own blood. He's the same. Jesus who healed the sick, who raised the dead, who opened blinded eyes, who made deaf to hear, who made the mute to speak. He is still faithful. He is still powerful. He is still king. Amen. He's still king. It's the same Jesus. Watch this in number four. I'm in chapter seven now. Chapter seven, verse 14. His blood is still a cleansing agent. His blood is still a cleansing agent. Here the same multitude, they're worshiping in heaven. They're rejoicing out of the fact that they have come out of the great tribulation. More importantly, they are rejoicing that they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Their robes have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Now, now, now the questions in life. Like, how can a brown cow eat green grass and produce white milk? You ever ask yourself that question? Huh? Well, how can a black, sin-filled heart dip their lives in the royal red blood of Jesus and be made white as snow? I don't know, but it happens because of his blood tonight. It is a cleansing agent. Are you cleansed? Not only redeemed, but are you cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ? Walking holy and have a changed life. I like number five. Number five, because his blood still gives victory over Satan. Mercy. His blood still gives victory. I'm in chapter 12 of Revelation now. I'm in chapter 12. The dragon is upset because he has failed to kill the Messiah. He engages in war with Michael and his angels. The archangel Michael was regarded as a heavenly patron of Israel, and he is an extension of the heavenly patron of the new people of God. Michael defeats the dragon and casts him out of heaven down to earth. And listen to what the text says. Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren. That's Satan, y'all. Who accused them before God day and night has been cast down. And oh, we, they overcame him. You missed it. They overcame him. By the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives unto death. Has Satan accused you? Has he attacked you? Has he aggravated you? Has he tried to ruin your life? My God, there is coming a day when I will stand in the courtroom of heaven and the accuser of the brethren will say he did this sin and he did that sin. God, don't you remember when Stacy did this? Oh, but my lawyer, Jesus Christ, pulls the file on my life and offers defense exhibit only. And that is during a vacation Bible school in the more Pentecostal Holiness Church, August of 1994. I applied the blood of Jesus to my life. Have I been perfect? No. Have I made mistakes? Yes. Have I repented? Yes. His blood covers. That's my testimony. You ought to shout because the blood is applied to your life. You have victory over Satan because the blood. And God, my judge, says, I find no record of his sins. He has been forgiven, pardoned full and free by the blood that was shed for him by my son. His sins have been cast as far from the east as to, hold on a minute, let me shout and give God glory in the, hallelujah, you ought to rejoice because your sin. You ought to rejoice that your sins are under the blood of Jesus Christ. Watch this. 
His blood is a testimony of all his enemies being defeated. I'm in chapter 19 of Revelation. The writer comes in. He is the conquering Christ. And his robe is dipped in blood. The description recalls Isaiah 63, where the conqueror's garments are stained with the crimson blood of his Edomite enemies. But here John reshapes this imagery to portray the gospel of Christ who triumphed by shedding his own blood. His blood will cry out, you thought you destroyed me. You thought you had me. You thought you could destroy my people. You thought you could wipe out my church. But Jesus rides on a white horse and the armies of heaven are clothed. His clothes are dipped in his own blood. His armies of heaven are following him and is as if to shout victory, victory, victory. We have victory through the blood of Jesus Christ tonight. But let me go back to chapter 5. Because there's something awesome going on in chapter 5. His blood is still worthy of my worship. His blood, let me say it, is still worthy of my worship. You ought to praise God because of his blood. You ought to worship him because of of his blood. I've been in a lot of services and I've had to cope sometimes with quiet atmosphere. That's all right. That's all right. Sometimes the Lord moves through tears. He moves through hands being raised. He moves through sometimes the light bulb being turned on and people understanding the word of God. That, that's an awesome time. Amen. Revelation chapter 8 talks about how there's going to be silence in heaven for half an hour. And we always used to joke that this was all for the quiet folk. That's probably not the case. But we used to joke a lot like that. Regardless, there are some of us here who are just wired a little differently. And some of us recognize and cannot contain ourselves when the last book says, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is to come. When the text says you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you have created all things. When the book says you are worthy to take the scroll because you were slain and have redeemed me by your blood. Worthy is the Lamb. Will you help me worship him tonight and help me praise him tonight. Blessing and glory and honor and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Can you raise your hand and just worship him tonight because of the blood of Jesus Christ? We hear this kind of praise in the Bible and you don't have to tell us to praise. You don't have to work down to praise. His blood causes praise in my life. And listen, if that won't do it for you, maybe you ought to try this. Go over to McLeod Cancer Center. Sit in the lobby for a while. You ought to start shouting because they haven't called your name. Walk on over to Barron Oak Cemetery. Look through the tombstones and start shouting over the fact that your name is not on one of them. You're still alive and he's kept you thus far. Go down to the mental ward. Check on the list of people who have literally lost their minds because of depression and fear and anxiety and worry. You ought to start shouting because you woke up this morning in your right mind. But can I digress to my main point? His blood ought to be enough to praise God. His blood ought to be enough his blood saved you, he redeemed you, he cleansed you, 
His blood ought to be enough. And whenever these events in Revelation take place, guess what? When we get there, you haven't overcharged his account. You haven't overused his grace. You haven't exhausted the resources of his blood. His blood will be just as strong then as it is now. It will never lose its power. Somebody help me worship and God.